from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is APTV. Welcome to APTV, episode 479 for Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. This week we have banter, news, updates, new coverage from Paper Blanks, bird watching with Eric, a new a contest winner, a new contest, plus a Penlux, a Kueco, and some Monteverdes that are all coming soon. Hey Steph. Hey Brian. Did you hear the joke about the uh, the pizza and the broken pencil? I have not. I think I just screwed up the joke. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's it's cheesy and it's pointless. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just like going for a really, really deadpan delivery. Yeah. Anyway, need need more practice on that. Anyway. Did you hear the one about the uh, red ship and the blue ship that collided at sea? (laughs) No. Both crews were marooned. Oh, oh. Today, our location bumper is Hazel Made Art Studio, which is actually our new neighbor. Right right, there, yeah. Right there? Literally on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. You just knock on the wall and get them over here. Nah, nah. uh, They just opened up next to us in in Murray Photo, and uh, it's a place for young artists to imagine, create, play, and be inspired. Yes, a very, very recent, uh, this last year, uh, they just moved in. Uh, and we've never had anything there. There's always been, um, I think it was U.S. Air had a, um, a, a call center or a training center there. Uh, so they always had computers and, and lab setups. And there's never been anything there. So it's nice to have a nice retail space yeah, right nice, next to us. It's nice fun stuff that brings people from everywhere to yes. do cool things with art, which, you know. Art is good. Art mm-hmm. is good. We dig art. Mm-hmm. And today is also, oh, got some oh my goodness. very exciting things we going sing? on. Ooh. We could sing. Don't tempt me. We should not sing. Mm-hmm. I thought that. I'll sing. No, no. We have no. a birthday. Birthday yes. in the house. Happy birthday, SBRE Brown. He is, uh, if you have not heard of SBRE Brown, uh, that would be Stephen Brown. Well, is not only one of, if not the most prolific pen re- reviewers on YouTube, he is also a doctor of cognitive neuroscience and the head of psychology de- of the psychology department at the Red Deer Polytechnic College in Albert- Alberta, Canada. Just, Happy birthday. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So that's quite that's quite a, a business card. Doctor of Cognitive Neuroscience. Yeah, it's, it's a long, long, long <laughs> title. But no, Steven Steven's been doing videos forever. Uh, I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even guess how many he's got on YouTube. It's it's bunches, hundreds, thousands. I know a lot. So if you need to know extra things about pens, good old Doctor Professor and Stephen Brown. Every yeah, every every make model imaginable. So very cool. And uh, who? Oh, very ex- I, I, I didn't even read the next next line, mm-hmm. but uh, there it is. Literally thousands of videos. You are you are on the right wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So no. we'll, we'll have a link uh, uh, in, to the um, in the description below to his uh, channel. So <laughs> Go happy tell birthday, him happy birthday, Doctor Brown. Mm-hmm. And uh, also important news: this Sunday, February twenty sixth, a very special day for me. For you? National Pistachio you Day. You like pistachios? Love them. Do you? Oh my okay. goodness. Okay. I am so going to celebrate this holiday. I almost brought a bowl of pistachios oh. to just eat on the podcast, but Can I didn't think Justin would like that very I much. I have ever had a pistachio. <gasps> Never had one. I'll be right back. I'm going, I'll, I'm going to get some right now. <laughs> yeah. What? I, I, I am going to try to bring these next time I see Don't think I've them. ever had one. No. Oh, they are, they are joyous. They're just a little sweet. A little salty. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like you. Uh, indeed. Indeed. I was prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so apparently pistachios arrived in the United States sometime in the 1880s. And California produces about 300 million pounds of pistachios each year, accounting for 98% of America's production. 98% mm-hmm. is in California. Yeah, okay. Guess. Where's the other 2%? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess it's like... Just squeaking over the border over the into border. Nevada. <laughs> Who's like a county in Washington Nevada with a couple something. trees? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, they split naturally when ripe. Which I mean, if you're if you're a, that's kind of like is that like gardening for dummies or? Uh, I guess so. Something? I I didn't know that. I, I huh. wondered if they like roasted them. If they're like oysters or mussels, where they just kind of like come open a little when they're done. Cooking. But when they open up, they're they're ready to they're ready to to, to pick. Yeah, they're called the smiling 
the smiling nut because of that or the happy nut. Like, aw. You're, you're definitely a happy nut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're my spirit fetch. <laughs> Not like you. What are nuts, anyways? They're just they're my spirit nuts. They're, they're, not, they're not a vegetable. Um, a spirit plant. A limbo champ walks into a bar. He loses. New covers from Paper Blanks. Oh yes. Um, so these are always fun, and I always think back to the first time I saw Paper Blanks. And Lisa and I were at uh, Barnes and Noble actually, and they had them. And we saw them, and we just we just couldn't wrap our hands around our heads around how beautiful these things were, and we couldn't make a decision. We literally sat down on the ground pulling them out. Uh, but there I are love new watching people walking through, yeah, the having that exact same moment. And I, I don't know how they come up with these designs, and a lot of them are, are historically yeah. um, originated. But um, and I, I can't pronounce half of them. Uh, we've got here the new covers, the Ter- Terena. Yeah, true. I mean, look at that. That's great. And something. these come in multiple sizes. So some are in the midi. This is the ultra. You've got the the midi, and then there's the mini, which is the the, the tiny size, about roughly a seven ish. I was um, looking these up earlier, and I, I think this one's inspired by a by a rug or a tapestry style. Oh, yes. There oh, we go. Look. See, and on the on the back, in the back, there's always oh. a little little paragraph here that tells you what how they got this or what, what they inspired by so we've got to learn so much about art history this from is, these this i did not great. know that was there this one and, and they have a, such a cool texture to them too it's not just yeah. a printed they actually have an actual texture to them i really love these it's just a um, nice nicely augments the like design you can they're little tiny like almost all of them have some sort of like yes. shiny bits with yeah. some foiling in yep. there yeah they all have you know they have a little pocket in the back to put your stuff. Um, this one here is the Flametta, which is a kind of a neat red and gold and yellow. That one might would it be one of my favorite of the new covers. Yeah, so this is comes from a 12, 1725 binding of Ooh. a particular book. So, I mean, it's really cool that they do that. Um, the Flametta, got, what have you got? I've got the Verde. Yeah, that's cool. That's probably. cool. It looks like a little gaming board almost. Yeah, probably not inspired by the salsa. Probably. <laughs> the salsa. <laughs> Uh, inspired by the Renaissance binding for a book called The Treatise on Colors. Okay. Uh, I've got here, what did I get on the right? Cara Ori. Ooh. Uh, which is, re- this one's pretty cool because it actually has one of these magnetic uh, covers where it closes, magnetic closures. But yeah, these are super cool. Obviously, I think that uh, one's a kimono design. Could be, could be. I would, I would go with that. Japanese, yeah, Japanese kimono. It says right there on the cover. Uh-huh. Good, good reader. That's a high. <laughs> I did, I did read the covers. So I cheated. <laughs> you did your homework. <laughs> That's where we go. And this is the vintage Vogue plume. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That one's cool. Yeah, yeah. This one always catches my eye. Uh, yeah. What have I got here? This one, this one's a new one too. A meta, and this is in the midi size, and this one's actually sealed up, but also has another magnetic. Uh, closure on it, which is pretty cool. Oh, I uh, like their little offset triangle. Yeah, yeah, it's a little on. offset triangle. That's kind of neat. That's so meta. Uh, the three sizes again are mini, which is a, a three and three quarter by five and a half. So that's this oh, this little guy here. I've got one. The midi is kind of that a six ish uh, five by seven, yeah. and the ultra size, the large, uh, is seven by nine. Uh, both av- available both in uh, lined and blank. And that uh, all of these new ones do feature uh, lined paper. So uh, check out uh, the new paper blanks. And then, of course, we've got restock on some of the old classic models. And every year, paper blanks goes through, and they, they get rid of some, and they add a bunch more. So it's always every year is always pretty cool. An ever shifting array of color of colors and covers. I still have my original paper blanks that I have not finished yet. So one of these days, uh, and they discontinued it now. So I want to kind of keep it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now it's a collectible. It's a, Maybe. <laughs> All right. Next up, um, not oh, just in, yeah. but uh, and, and I don't write the script here, so mm-hmm. this is a surprise to me. But the last one uh, that we have right now, the Pelican M800 black, red with gold trim. Now, why is this on here? Why I believe this is this? a cry for help. <laughs> this is a cry for help. <laughs> Eric Eric wants us to mention this pen because if it stays with us much longer, he may have to buy it. Oh, this is great. I love this pen. I, this is really a fantastic pen. A piston filler. Piston filler is two-tone gold nib. 
I did not know until recently that the nib units screw out so that they're really easy yes. to clean. Oh, er- Eric hasn't told you that every time we talk about Pelican, it's like, well, do you know why these are my favorite pens? And yes, Eric, you threw it in, you know, and you put a little it- silicone grease on there every time. Ask them. When that you is, get back, ask them. That is exactly how I found out yes. about it. It was. It just happened outside the podcast. And, and, and did he include the little bit about the silicone? You yes, can indeed. Put the silicone, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know this is a really fantastic pen. Really great size, too, in the hand. It's just, and it goes into the pocket real nice. Oh, just, I like this one a lot. He has good taste, that man. Yeah, that's like a, like, really like the king of pen sized in your hand? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's getting there. Yeah, and, and posted for sure. It's and posted, it's quite, quite, quite long. Quite large, but it's it's nicely balanced though. I like how they, they've they've been able to maintain a large pen that's posted that has a decent balance, and it's kind of getting in right in here. And what is this called? We have a name for the this. First web space. Is that what that is? Yes. The first web space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's just a little bit balancing right there. In fact, if I let go of my fingers, yeah. Oh yeah. It's pretty close. So really nice. Um, so you can see through the barrel to see what your ink supply is. Uh, but it's second largest of the Pelican Sovereign series. Uh, the M800 sports body red and black striped celluloid acetate. The black cap, piston filling like you mentioned, gold plated trim. Uh, and uh, 18 karat gold uh, bicolor nib is available. Extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And uh, right now we have the extra fine in uh, for Eric. And I think we've got some other M800s too, so we could swap nibs. But really, a really fantastic pen if you haven't. I gotta uh, check it out. If you haven't haven't seen one or you haven't put one in your hand, you really need to. It's really a great, great pen. Oh wow, yeah. I expected that to feel big for me, but big, no, that's big really nib nice. Too. Nicely balanced. Yeah, and that's I, a great nib. I like how it posts really securely. It kind of mm-hmm. goes on there real nice. I always love the design on these nibs. It's so just... so help Eric out. Yes. Take Save that, him take from that himself. Off. Take that off his <laughs> hands. What is the opposite of a croissant? A happy uncle. We had a contest from last week, APTV. Very simple question. Are you participating in Inco Rimal? I, How, I, how's your Inco Rimal going? I did one. <laughs> you I, did one? I wrote on <laughs> a piece Joel? of paper. <laughs> I, I wrote, this is a letter, except I translated it into French so that I could be fancy. <laughs> and then I put my little fuzzy hedgehog sticker on it and I handed it to Eric. So I, I have participated. I ex- expect nothing less of you <laughs> to do it in French. <laughs> yes. uh, I'm, I'm doing terribly, uh, but I, I think, you know, we're around in the corner, but I think I can, I think I can make up. Point. I have sent more Inkorimo letters than I did last year, which I'm, <laughs> I'm calling that a that's victory. A, I don't think you get a plaque anymore. It didn't, it used to, Eric used to send out little certificates. Oh, that's didn't cool. Didn't he, like 10 years ago? I, I, I thought. don't know. Um, I, I've never gotten one because I've never actually really. Last year, I did, I did a heck of a job. I think I got 27 or 29 in. I don't remember what. That's fabulous. But what are we, our stats here. What do we got for oh. stats? All right. So 60% of respondents say they're not participating, though some of those respondents say they wish they had time for it. And 40% of respondents say they are. We, we should mention, too, that it's, it's not about sitting down and writing long, long, drawn-out letters. Um, postcard, a post-it note. You know, hey... Thanks for being you, whatever, you know. So just, you, the idea is to get you to use your pens. Yeah. I got an Inco Rimo letter sent to me from the store that had an excellent tip in it. It's just right with a big pilot yeah. parallel. <laughs> there you go. Giant, giant 1.5 stubs. <laughs> you can say one or two sentences. Yeah, you finish the page really page. easily. Yeah, that's a great, great tip. Uh, so we, we have some comments here. What do we got here? Fabulous. Kathy Cullen Stern says, am I participating in Inkorimo? Sort of. I wrote a letter on February 1st with the plan to continue, <laughs> but so far that's my only one. Woohoo, we're tied. <laughs> Sorry for your backlog, Eric, but I do have you on my list. <laughs> nice, nice. Emily Snoop says, thanks for another great show. I'm not participating this year, but it does sound like fun to do some year. That has been me up until, like... Four days ago. <laughs> you can do it. All right. Justin Martin says, Eric, yes, I'm participating in Inkorimo, and I am so much enjoying receiving notes and letters in the mail nearly every day. That is, the, I think, the cool part is that you get letters back. I'm up to date. In fact, I'm ahead, and I'm responding to all I receive. Wish I were doing so with that custom 845. Mm, nice pen, nice pen. All right. Uh, Jennifer C. says, Alas, I am not participating in Inkorimo. I had plans and they were good. I even got out my fancy paper and wax and seals. 
And then I turned around twice and hey ho, it's the 16th and I haven't even started one measly letter. Uh, zut alors. Nicely done. Nice. All Best right. Best laid plans of mice and men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Summer Pearl says I am on pace to complete Inkle Rimo and then some. Loaded up on Peter Popper stationery. Good stuff. And Good friends stuff. and family have enjoyed them. My first correspondence was to Brian Anderson to thank him for the stellar repair to my Parker Vintage Pen. A perfect way to kick things off. I'm glad it's working out for you. wonder if she wrote it with her Parker Vintage Pen. Uh, I, I don't recall, but it's, mm-hmm. I have my, my letters on my desk. So. Aha. Uh, Marilyn Gardner, I have, n- I have not been participating in Inco Rimo this year unless writing letters in my head, which I do sometimes, counts. Oh, man, if I get to count my shower letters. Yeah, yeah. Take that extra step and put it on, put it on paper. And uh, Greg M. says, Eric, remember that next Wednesday, February 22nd, is National Margarita Day. If you record on Wednesday, you may want to celebrate while taping. Wouldn't that be fun? I fell behind on Inco Rimo several years ago and have not caught up yet. I do not have an estimate when I will catch up to the schedule. You and me both. I remember one year I sat down on the first and I wrote letters to a bunch of friends. I must have written about four or five letters and then they never went in the mail. Oh, no. And then I, 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 then I found them like a couple months later and I said, well, okay. I mean, you you put the thoughts down. I, I put them on paper, yeah. So. <laughs> it's, it's a start. <laughs> And Michelle says, Eric, I'm in the midst of Inco Rimo right along with you. This year I convinced my daughter to join in the fun and she has received so many great letters. It has truly made her feel like a rock star. Ooh. It's such a great opportunity to make someone's day. Thanks for making my day once again with so many laughs. And we have a winner. A winner. Yes, that would be Michelle Stevenson. Ooh. You have won a uh, Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Yeah, $20 yeah. Twenty dollars on your Anderson Pens account. <laughs> You're looking at me like, <laughs> <laughs> like hopefully I don't say the wrong number. <laughs> what, what does she say? Uh, she says I am so far behind on writing anything this month. If I get any correspondence out there, it'll maybe it'll be to beg Eric to give me his Platinum Shape of Heart pen. I That'd be a that, very long shot. I doubt shot. that's happening. <laughs> I doubt that. And but uh, you, you might not get the Shape of Heart, but. You get twenty dollars for your next yeah. purchase, so that's a that's meet 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 you halfway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't forget to write to Eric at Eric at AndersonPens dot com. Yeah, he'll get you all set up. We have some additional comments. Uh, Paul Herman says, "Happy Almond Day, uh, everyone." I see looks like an almond. Most people think I'm crazy, but I think they're nuts. <laughs> oh, I have almond pistachio ice cream bars. <laughs> Got all, the, all the nut days covered. You are nut. Stephanie Young, <laughs> uh, question for the host. What is the cutoff for comments being entered into the contest? Since you filmed these early, would it be the Monday or Sunday before? Just curious, since I sometimes watch the videos late. It's a good I'm, question. I'm, I'm, it's a good question. Uh, I confess I didn't know the answer. In, in, in Miraculously, the answer appeared to us here on the page. Aha. Uh, and the answer is the random winner is pulled on Tuesday morning before each Thursday episode of APTV. So today for next week? Yes. Today's, yes. well, yes, yesterday. Yes. Today's the, yesterday. Then be Tuesday the 22nd would be the <laughs> one for, I'm so confused, I need so why, a calendar. Why, why, you, why you think about that? Why don't the you, 21st? What day is it? <laughs> so Tuesday, Tuesday morning before the Thursday episode. Yeah, so. Uh, yes. So that would be last week's episode before the Thursday. I'm so confused. <laughs> Just read the next line there. Perfect. Bastidato says, has a question for Eric. He says, I prefer pens with a silver trim. However, the red M800 Extra Fine is calling me. Heed the call. Yeah, yeah, it's... As is the blue M805. I can only get one. Oh, this is, this is more difficult. If I re- remember correctly, the M800 was trying to lure you in. Have you succumbed to the siren call? And if so, do you regret it? Thank that, you. That explains all the attention on the M800 mm-hmm. this episode. This, uh, apparently, the siren call must have gotten louder. Uh, must have. What, what is uh, Eric's? Uh, Eric, Eric replies. Eric, Eric has replied, so we can, we can give you his answer. Uh, I have not yet succumbed to the siren call of the M800, black, red, with gold trim. But if I do, I won't regret it, he says. I have never regretted the purchase of any Pelican M800. They are phenomenal pens and are just the right size for me. How many has he had? You know, that's a Neither good question. Neither purchase of any Pelican M800. That, that implies more than one. I have, I have seen him bring home at least one. Really? 
Yeah, really? it's like a tortoise shell one. Oh, came, okay, came okay. home from some pen show somewhere. Yeah, and, and on these two, what you have to remember with Pelican, the nibs do have a tendency to run broader. So your fine runs kind of like a medium. Your extra fine is you know kind of runs closer to a fine. So when you're picking your nib choice, keep that in mind. So if you normally write with a medium, fine might be what you're looking for. And extra fine is going to be a real good, solid, usable fine. All right, so we're, all right, I don't know if we're helping or not helping Eric get his pen. Ina Zara, so we have more. This is here. We got Ina Zara. Mm -hmm. This might sound random, but why Pelican 4001? This 4001 means something. Is it related to a die number or an ingredient? Maybe. Uh, great question. Here's the answer. Way back in the day, like the late 1800s, Pelican made many different varieties of inks, each for different purposes. Pelican's price list for the 1890s, which detailed the available ink varieties, was 17 pages long. Why, I'd Holy love to cow. see that. In an effort to make the purpose of particular inks easier to recall, Pelican started trademarking their inks in groups by purpose with numbers. Numbers included 2001, 3001, 4001, 5001, and eventually 6001. Today, only the 4001 remains. It is simply a trademarked holdover from more than a century ago. So that's very interesting. Oh, kind of reminds me of Sailor Ink Studio. Yes, it <laughs> might, that might be a 17 page uh, yeah. page ink list there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new contest yes. survey. It's mm -hmm. nearly spring in the Northern Hemisphere, nearly. Suggest us a spring ink. Oh, or a sprink. A sprink? A spring ink, oh. sprink. Hey Steph. Coming soon. Ooh. We got a couple pens, a couple things are coming soon. Penlux Masterpiece Grande Golden Crystal. Oh. It needs a couple more, a couple more words in there. But this is a fantastic pen. Uh, the Penlux Masterpiece Grande in Golden Crystal features an opaque resin body and cap with threads of shimmering, swirling golden yellow accented with golden trim. It's really a stunning looking pen. Gold plated stainless steel Yovo nib. Number six size gives a smooth writing experience, and the oversized body with the piston filling system makes this a terrific value. It's, it's crazy, this pen with the piston filler oversized. Nib options on this pen, fine, medium, broad, and 1.1 stub. Really a good looking pen. Um, we've got a number of uh, Masterpiece Grandes, and lately it seems every one that comes out is nicer than the next. Yeah, yeah. And I, this is cool if you like transparent pens. I feel like I actually designed this pen in my mind. <laughs> Did you? When, yeah, when we got the images for the, I think it was the snowflake, it was like opaque with white, with, mm -hmm. with silver trim. I was like, oh, this would look so cool with gold flecks and gold it, trim. It sort of reminds me of Voila? like some of those those drinks like Jägermeister or uh, what's oh, what, what's the other one? Oh, Goldschlager. Goldschlager, the one I purposely try to forget from my college days. But yeah, this kind of, it kind of reminds me of Goldschlager in a pen. Yeah. Which I can I can smell it now too because they have oh, that. Oh no! Can yeah. you smell that that mintiness of those? Oh, I have a headache just thinking yeah, about it. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on. But anyway, <laughs> that's coming in soon. Uh, they're, they're really a cool pen. It's a nice oversized pen. It, it's one forty nine size, king of pen size, um, but great great looking pen. Now on the other end of the spectrum. Yes. Oh, the Toyoma Teal, the Kaweco Skyline Sport T Toyoma Teal. Did I say that right? Toyoma. I, Toyama? A, Toyama, maybe? Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's coming out March 2nd, and this uh, Kaweco Skyline support, Sport in Toyama Teal is po a pocket-sized pen that features a smooth steel nib and a deep iridescent teal barrel and cap. The That's Skyline cool. Sport, like all Kuwaiko Sports, is short when capped, but when posted, it is a comfortable five and a quarter inches long. And that cap kind of screws on to close, so it stays nice and stable and firm. And uh, this pen accepts both standard and inter standard international cartridges, which are included, or a short converter, which is available separately. This mm -hmm. this is a nice color. I really like this color. I mean, it's uh, they made some really good colors lately, but this is just. I, yeah. It's nice. It I don't know what else to say. It's really, it, a, it, it hits me right here. Right, right, right there. Right there. That's it's a good pen. I just got my first Skyline Sport with the the iridescent pearl, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I have really enjoyed that pen. It's super practical. It's yep. always in my purse. It just yep. fits and everywhere. And you're right. When, when it's posted, it's even if you have big hands, and my hands are kind of on the mediumest to largest size, that pen it fits perfect in your hand. It's, mm -hmm. it's just such a nice pen. Uh, 
we're also now that this next this next item that's coming soon we've actually had before coming it's, back soon it's coming back soon it's been a long time monteverdi tool pens and pencils so the monteverdi tool pens and pencils will, will be available as either a ballpoint with the stylus or a pencil with the stylus and they come in seven different finishes brass orange red black dark blue yellow and silver is that seven I wasn't both, counting. Both the pens and the pencils are hefty in the hand and feature six-sided barrels. The pencils sport 0.9 millimeter lead, which is cool, at one end and a touch screen stylus at the other. Uh, the pen uh, sport, the ballpoint pens sport a smooth writing soft roll ballpoint at one end and, of course, the stylus. And uh, under the stylus, or styli, uh, the, uh, of these writing instruments, you'll find um, a Phillips head and a flat head screwdriver. And I have used those actually. And they come in a pinch when you you need something like you need a little for your glasses or something. On the barrel, you'll find a ruler with markings in inches and three different metric scale markings. And built into the barrel of the ballpoint tool pen is a spirit level, a bubble level. I've never heard them called that. I've never up till <laughs> now. Yeah, I just call it a level, and we've used those here too. In fact, uh, one of these cases, I think when we first got it, was not quite right, and we said, "Well, I wish we had a level." And I said, "Well, Lisa, you've got one in your purse." And there it was. Um, the uh, pens and pencils make great gifts for Father's Day and our graduations and just because. So and those just are, for, yeah, life. Yeah, those are coming soon. So we, we used to carry them a long time ago. And uh, now, uh, in fact, I don't think we ever had the brass, but that one looks great. The dark blue is nice. So um, those are coming soon. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can also check us out on social media as as in. As Anderson pens. <laughs> as, as <what? laughs> no, I mean, make sure just... make sure you, you look for Anderson pens, not whatever no. she just said, because you'll never find <laughs> us. Uh, don't forget, there's a store in Chicago. It's ground floor, the Palmer House Hilton. Open seven days a week. You'll find Lisa there. Uh, we're there at chicago.andersonpens.com. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And uh, the pen in my pocket this week. Dun, dun, dun. Something nobody's going to guess, Ooh. because I don't even know what the name of it is. But this is a, a Namiki... Uh, screen maquillage, and this is in the uh, essentially this is the, a custom 74 size with the same nib as a custom 74. Um, but branded Namiki, and it's got this lovely little floral pattern on the barrel, and uh, it's really kind of a cool pen. So, if you've got a custom 74, that's basically the same pen. So, I was gonna guess that, that that's too. what you were gonna guess custom yeah. 74, but with screen printed maquillage. <laughs> All right.